If you haven't already viewed my first video, be sure to click the link to the first part of the video in the description below, which gives an overview of scleroderma and its various types. So we learned how scleroderma is an autoimmune disease that results in the overproduction of collagen, and that it affects everyone differently. How exactly does one manage such a debilitating disease? As we go through this video, I will outline ways you can treat and manage this disease if you or a loved one is affected by scleroderma. Scleroderma is highly impactful on the daily lives of those affected. What is also troubling is that scleroderma has no cure. But before we get too worried, scleroderma and its associated symptoms can largely be reduced if detected in its early stages and properly managed. Let's start off with treating localized scleroderma. There is no single effective drug used for treatment, and treatment often depends on the type, severity, rate of disease progression, and the patient's age. Three common treatments include immunosuppressives, phototherapy, and vitamin D analogs. Immunosuppressives are drugs that inhibit or prevent the activity of the immune system to treat autoimmune diseases. The most commonly used drugs are methotrexate and corticosteroids, and their dose and duration of use depends on the severity of skin lesions. Topical steroids are used during the inflammatory phase of the disease. However, there are many side effects associated with these drugs, so appropriate monitoring is required when taking these drugs. Phototherapy is another technique used which has antifibrotic and immunosuppressive effects, most commonly using UVB light, which only penetrates the upper regions of the skin. Phototherapy is often combined with a photosensitizing agent and is promising in treating morphia at an early onset of the disease, but not during the disease's late stages. Lastly, vitamin D analogs such as calcitriol, when taken orally, have been shown to inhibit fibroblast proliferation and collagen synthesis, and it has been shown to have immunoregulatory properties. Now let's go into treatment for systemic scleroderma. Treatment and management varies widely and depends on which part of the body gets affected. 90% of those with scleroderma experience Raynaud's phenomenon. Here are some measures you can take to prevent further complications. It is important not to smoke as that narrows your blood vessels and dress warmly and wear gloves so that your fingers are not in direct contact with the cold. Exercising regularly is important because that stimulates blood circulation to the affected area. If the kidneys are affected in those with renal crisis, which occurs in about 10% of patients with scleroderma, it can be managed by taking angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors like Captopro to alleviate the symptoms. It is important to monitor your blood pressure and to notify your physician if you detect any abnormality. When your digestive system is affected, your body may have difficulty swallowing and absorbing nutrients. It is important to eat small, frequent meals and to avoid late night meals, spicy and fatty foods, alcohol, and caffeine. Oral antibiotics are often taken to prevent bacterial overgrowth in the bowels, which can cause diarrhea. It is also recommended to eat moist, soft foods and to chew them well. Virtually all patients with systemic scleroderma have some loss of lung function. The heart can also be weakened, scarred, and inflamed in these conditions. Treatment may range from drugs to surgery. In pulmonary fibrosis, the hardening or scarring of lung tissues, drugs are taken to suppress the immune system. Those affected by pulmonary hypertension, high blood pressure in the blood vessels, are treated with drugs that dilate the blood vessels. Signs of fatigue, shortness of breath, and swollen feet should be reported to your physician, and patients can undergo surgery to treat these conditions. SPIN, the Scleroderma Patient-Centered Intervention Network, is chaired by Dr. Brett Thoms and hopes to develop programs that focus on the problems important to scleroderma patients and aims to develop and evaluate psychosocial and rehab interventions that are accessible and low cost through various patient organizations such as the Scleroderma Society of Ontario. It is important to note that each patient affected by scleroderma is unique as they are likely to have a different combination of problems and each person may be on a different combination of medications to help alleviate their symptoms. So how do you know if you have scleroderma? The diagnosis for this disease can be quite difficult as its early stage symptoms often overlap with other diseases. It is important to consult a physician with extensive experience with scleroderma treatment who will use your medical history, physical examinations, and laboratory test findings to make a proper diagnosis. 
If you notice any abnormalities in your skin or body, it is always recommended to consult your physician in order to make a proper diagnosis. If you want to know more about this rare autoimmune disorder, there are plenty of resources out there such as the Scleroderma Society of Ontario and the Hamilton Scleroderma Group, which aim to increase public awareness, advance patient wellness, and support research for scleroderma. The link to their websites are posted in the description below. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by the Hamilton Scleroderma Group and the Demystifying Medicine series. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and hit the subscribe button to check out our other videos.